Hello and welcome to All Hands on Tech Live. I'm your host, Jeremy Morgan, and today we're gonna to build a JavaScript game. We're going to be working on the JavaScript game that we've been working on for quite a while now. It's called Totally Awesome. It's our 2D platformer game. If you've never been to this stream before, then uh, I will do a quick rundown on what the game is, how we built it, how we put it together. Um, today, we're going to do some a little bit of uh, adjustments to the map on this game, and we're going to play with GitHub Copilot. And we're going to use GitHub Copilot, so we've used Tab9, which is a generative AI coding tool that I love very much. Um, but today we're gonna use GitHub Copilot because there's a couple new features there. Um, I've got the beta version spun up here and it has like a chat version and things like that. So we're gonna play around with that a little bit uh, so you can kind of see how GitHub Copilot integrates into your coding. And I'm not being sponsored or uh, reimbursed or anything for any of these tools. This is just something that I wanna bring to you, the audience, so that you can look at and uh, decide whether it's cool enough for you to use or not. So let's jump right in here. Um, there we go, uh, wrong desktop. <laughs> let's see, we'll go back here. And I just updated OBS, which is kind of funny. That's never happened to me before. I just updated OBS, and for some reason, the screen capture is now a different screen, which is very odd. So I'm going to create a new screen here. That's never happened before, but not a big deal. So we'll go to display, call this desktop, and that's the one we want. It's desktop. Yeah, I think that's that's the one we want. So real time uh, debugging here. And it still seems to be the wrong screen. I think that's what we want right there. Very interesting. I was not expecting that uh, at all. I probably should have double checked some things before updating OBS. But there we go. We're, we're fixed and we're good now. Uh, yeah, that is a little bit silly, to say the least. So, now we can jump right in. Now that we've uh, shown you a little behind the scenes. So I, I obviously have OBS running over here and Restream Chat and all that stuff. That's the window that, uh, that I look at to see people chatting. <laughs> and so you all get to see that screen. This monitor, this screen is the correct screen. We're here. Uh, I do feel like I should bump this up a little bit because you might notice that I am using Visual Studio Code, but I'm using a nightly build. Now, why am I using the Insiders nightly build? I'm using the Insiders nightly build of Visual Studio Code and in here, I'm using the nightly version of GitHub Copilot right here. Now why you might ask? Because we're going to use the GitHub Copilot chat here and some newer GitHub Copilot tools today while we're building this game and playing on this game. So uh, that's why I decided to switch IDEs. I've been using Visual Studio Code production version uh, throughout this stream for since we started streaming, but I'll do something different today. But one of the first things I wanted to do is open up Tiled, and I kind of want to do some changes to this. So we're going to go through that because we haven't done any changes to our map in a long time. So today, if it's your first time joining, you will get to see how we do that. Now, I'm going to run serve really quick. And I'm going to bring up the game so you can 
see this game. Let's see, we're at localhost 3000. So if this is your first time joining this, this stream, I can get you all caught up. Get caught up where you need to be. We are working on a game called Totally Awesome here. And this game is fun. Like it's been fun to build this. We'll open up our console here. Totally Awesome is a 2D platformer. So think of something like Mario Brothers and it looks like Mario Brothers, honestly, when we start it. And this 2D platformer, your job is to go around and collect cherries as we go through here. And then there are some enemies that if you touch them, you will die. So we've been playing around with this a lot. This game, um, on this stream, we've built this game from scratch. Now you do have a little defense against the enemies, as you can see there, you can hit them with a ball. You must hit them twice, according to the code. However, that is one of the things that uh, hasn't been working so great, honestly, on this game. And one of the things that maybe GitHub Copilot can help us debug that a little bit. And as you can see, I touched the bird and my health is now at 50%. So the next time I touch the bird, it's game over time. And this is our game. And th this is, like I said, it's a 2D platformer. We're using the Phaser JS framework. Phaser is a really cool JavaScript framework. We've used it to build this game from scratch. Now these graphics here are from the Pixel Adventure 2 set at itch.io. And speaking of jeremymorgan.itch.io, I'll send in the chat. I think that's what it is, yeah. I will send a link to a playable version of this game that you can play. I'll drop that in the chat really quick. of this game and it's also available on github and i will grab that link here it's totally awesome so all the source code for this is available also so we have the playable version of the game source code of the game you are more than free to download the source code and do whatever you want with it. Make it cool and sell it for a million dollars. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna check something here really quick. I did not do my usual tech check. So today we're streaming on several different platforms. I know we're streaming on Twitch for sure, but I would like to check this. Let's check and make sure we're on YouTube. Yes, we are streaming live on YouTube today. We're streaming on Twitch. And possibly LinkedIn, hopefully LinkedIn. Well, let's check. But we're always, always, always on Twitch. Okay, and we are live on LinkedIn also. So if you have a question, feel free to drop it in chat. Speaking of chat, for my LinkedIn folks, I will post those two links that I just posted in the general chat. Source code, oh, and it's not allowing me to comment. Source code for this game and playable version of this game. Perfect. All right. So if you've never joined this, this stream before, if this is your, your first time hanging out, this is it. This is our 2D platformer. We've got a couple enemies and we're just 
right now trying to grab cherries. Now, once you've grabbed all the cherries, as you can see, we get a our points increment. When you grab all the cherries, more cherries appear and another enemy appears. You can attempt to kill these enemies with a ball. And yeah, it's really fun. It's uh, something that we've been working on quite a while here today. Or today, this year. We've been working on this a lot. Now this is going to be our main screen. So what I wanna do is, is change some of these just a little bit. Change some of these platforms just a little bit. And we'll show you how easy that is to do with Tiled. So we're gonna open a project and our tiled project should be in here under project files. There it is, totally awesome tiled project. And under here is terrain TMX. This is our screen, which I can see for some reason the platforms and ground layer are not opening. And I'm not exactly sure why. So we'll find out. Totally awesome assets. I'll find out why our tile set isn't working. File our project. Maybe the session file. Nope. Terrain. Tile set. Should be. Tile set image. Open this up, 16 by 16. Interestingly enough, this terrain is not working. We do have this one working. Looks like we can, we can drop stuff in there. However, we want that original tile set. Edit tile set. There we go. Now it's now it's working the way we expect. So with this tile set is actually just a multi-dimensional array for the most part. This is what it generates. It generates a JSON file that you can load all this stuff up in. This is an older version. Now that I'm looking at it, this is quite a bit older version of the game. So we need to find that new one. because uh, this is an old version. I'm not sure why it's bringing up this older version, but we may have to start, we may have to make some changes to this or maybe even start over with a new map because this is a very old map that uh, that isn't valid anymore. This is the new one right here. I should say newer. Let's double check and let's put in something like, uh, I don't know, what would look cool in here? We'll do some of these type of uh, blocks. And we'll use these as like jump box. Just grab all four of these. Let's put another couple jump boxes in here. Save it. Access denied because we're currently serving that file. Let's 
go here, export as, terrain JSON, save. Now let's load this up and see if our changes are good. And there it is. There's our new jump boxes. So one of the things I'm thinking is, is maybe changing this, changing this around a little bit. Mostly because I'm tired of looking at it. It's getting a little boring. We need to do something a little more exciting. And I was hoping I could jump up there. But maybe if we create more of a tunnel type thing, it'll be harder to get away from the enemy to where you'll be forced to use that ball to, to get the enemy. I don't know. But let's look at it. Let's shut down our server. Let's look at tile. And what can we do with these tiles? We know that this is a good jump height and that's two blocks. So knowing that we can, we can uh, kind of design this a little bit different. So I'm looking for terrain JSON. What can we do here to make this a little more interesting? We can go here and say two blocks up because that's a good jump height. And we can make this more of like a tunnel. And actually I'm thinking of using uh, gold blocks for all of these. So let's start there. Gold blocks just look cooler to me. So let's make this more of a, a tunnel type thing that our player will have to go through. And then we'll go up here, two jumps up here. And here's another tunnel type thing that will need to be navigated. I don't really like that one. And this is all in our ground layer. So what that means is this is just the ground layer that you will collide with, our player will collide with. So our player cannot jump through these, basically lands on top of them. Now they're all gold, which looks a little cooler. I forgot there was like a, a select thing here. Yeah, so I could do that for the for the big ones. Let's erase these blocks. Let's see if we can make it so the player has to, like we could seal this off so that the player has to go up through a tunnel, through an enemy in order to get the cherries that they need to get. We've got this one here, which was uh, another little obstacle. And I think this looks a little better. So let's save it. Serve it. There we go. Now, one thing I'm noticing right now is the uh, enemies are not, enemies are pretty much staying all up here, which we don't really want that. So we are going to have to put some kind of little drop in there. Because it's kind of grouping our, our enemies together. One thing I'm going to try with GitHub Copilot is just dump this entire class in there and say, look for errors. 
I'm not really hopeful about it. I'm not super confident that it's going to find all of our errors, but we have errors. We definitely have errors. So to make this a little more interesting, I was thinking that tunnel thing would be cool, but we need our enemies to be able to fall down into here. For sure. We'll find some other areas to... for cherries to land on that we're gonna have to... we're gonna have to grab. We'll save that for now. So part of my future plans for this are uh, creating multiple levels. And see how I create that hole, then all of a sudden the, the enemies can get down there and they can get to you, which is good. Now, if anyone has any uh, questions or, or comments or anything, feel free to drop them in the chat. There we go. So let's try out some GitHub Copilot stuff. One of the cool things about GitHub Copilot is you can do comments like this and say, um, create another config. Let's see, I haven't used this with JavaScript very much, but create another scene. And I don't see any suggestions there, so let's let's try my other my other idea first. We're gonna go to our explorer. We're gonna open up game scene. This is our huge gigantic game scene. It's probably too big for GitHub Copilot, but let's find out. Let's see, propose a fix for the bugs in my code. So I'll say propose a fix for the bugs in my code. Can I just run it here? Now it's asking, sure, I'd be happy to help. Please provide me with the code and a description of the bugs you're experiencing. Okay, uh, enemies are dying without colliding with anything. Here's the code. Role must be user, got assistant. Yeah, so that is obviously way too big for the GitHub chat. So, let's see. Here's the code. Looks like this code is checking if there are any active Madbirds and then iterating over each one to add an overlap collider between the ball and the Madbird. That's exactly what it's doing. The destroy enemy function is called when the ball overlaps with Madbird. Is there any specific? Yes, the no overlap. Let's see if it has some suggestions here. Destroy enemy. Can you please provide me with the code for the destroy enemy function? Possibly. Go down to destroy enemy. There it is. I see. It looks like the issue may be with. Okay. So we're going to open this up a little bit more. And yeah, this is just another cool way. Hello, Damien. Thank you for joining the, the uh, stream today from LinkedIn. Uh, it's great, great to have 
people watching, so I'm not sitting here talking to myself like I'm silly. It looks like we do have quite a few people watching here, but. And check something else here really quick. Cool. So, um, the best place to follow us, always, always, always on Twitch. So sometimes we stream on uh, YouTube and LinkedIn. Sometimes we stream on Facebook, but we always, always, always stream on Twitch. I do this every Tuesday. My friend David Neal does this every uh, Thursday. So we're in here looking at Go GitHub Copilot. It says the issue might be with the way the health of the enemy is being checked. Now, this is code that I've written and that I've put in, so it could definitely be wrong. If the health equals zero, is equal to zero block, the code is checking if the health of the enemy is exactly at a zero. However, it's possible that the health of the enemy is going below zero, doing the health minus 50 line in the code. To fix this, if you can change the if health is equal to zero line to if health is, oh, okay. If health is less than equal to zero, sure the destroy enemy function is only called when the health of the enemy is less than or equal to zero. And it's giving me a code suggestion here. So let's try changing that and let's see if our, our players randomly, randomly die like they have been. And what I'll do is I'll kind of go up here and we'll just let them run around a little bit. And yeah, actually we'll generate two more. And nope, they're still randomly dying. As you can see, we've lost almost all of our enemies now. We'll generate a couple more. So that health function is not the cause of this. At least that I know of. And that's kind of interesting. So see how I put these two blocks close together. I really do kind of question the uh, overlap as the method. Oh, and it generated one that landed right on me. So let's see if GitHub Copilot can suggest a better way than overlap. Good way to detect the collision between two objects. There we go. It knows we're in phaser three. That's good. The overlap method is a good way to detect collision between two objects in phaser three. However, there are other methods you can use depending on your specific needs. However, for example, you can use the collider method to create a collider between two objects. This method allows you to specify a callback function that's called when two objects collide. Here's how to use the collider method. And I do believe that's what we're doing. Collider. Yeah, let's let's check that really quick. We have a collider between this platform or this player and the ground layer. We have ball colliders. We have cherry colliders, we have mad bird, blue bird. And 
And yeah, this one right here is exactly what we have. So GitHub Copilot is suggesting something that we already have. Here's an example of how to use the I don't know if we're enabling these. I've never seen this. Not that I remember. No. I've never seen this enable function. Here's an example of how to use the overlap method. Let's try it. To heck with it. Let's try the overlap method. Ball, this mad birds. Iterate, this is exactly what we're doing here. If the ball hits a mad bird. So let's just uh, do a quick quick check. Oh, and we've got more people in here. Hello, Damien. Hello, yeah, James, Xavier. Awesome. Thank you all for, for joining my silly live stream here where we try to figure out uh, how to make the physics in this stuff work. Now this is code. If you just joined me, I'm using some code or I'm using some uh, tools to debug some of this code. And we're using GitHub Copilot and using Copilot chat to see if we can find problems in this uh, code and fix it. So this is a shorter, different way. And one of the things I wanna try is just this enable thing because I've never seen the enable in the documentation. And I'm gonna ask, what does this physics world enable do? because I don't know what it does. I, like I said, I haven't seen it in the documentation and it's not in here. So here's a big long thing. Used to enable physics on a game object in phaser three. When you enable physics on an object, it creates a physics body for that object. And that's interesting. The code you provided, physics world enable methods used to enable physics on the ball and the mad birds. This allows you to use physics engine and simulate interactions. That's interesting because we are, we've already created these objects. We've got them out here in the world, but I think we need to go all the way up here and we need to enable them. So cherries, mad birds, and bluebirds are all groups. Player. Let's enable the ball, the mad birds, the bluebirds, and the player. Maybe that's the problem is these things aren't enabled. I don't see how this game could have possibly worked this long without it actually being enabled, but. Um, yes, GitHub Copilot is AI based. It's based on a GPT-4 model. And uh, it's pretty good. For the most part, most of the prompting you do is something like connect to a database and then it will <laughs> now that I say something it doesn't do it you can see it's working down here but a lot of times you can use comments for prompts and it also comes in when you're writing code and does suggestions based on AI it's pretty good ah so did not like that change. Boink. So we won't enable this player. Let's see if that changes anything. It does not. Cannot read properties of find is parent. And this is right in the uh, in the beginning of this. So let's just try 
for now to enable the ball. Nope. Cannot enable any of these. So this is, uh, you know, this is one of those things where we can kind of assume that this isn't correct. Because <laughs> like I said, I haven't, I haven't heard of this before, what it's asking us to do here. And it seems to break it. when we enable things. According to GitHub Copilot, we need to enable all of these things for them to work. However, that doesn't seem to work. So I do wanna do some refactoring in here for sure. You can see a bunch of stuff commented out that we've been commenting out for uh, quite a while. Got some enemy colliders that we had before. Um, enemy doesn't work anymore, so we deleted enemy completely so we can remove all that out of there. And I'm just going to keep hitting save and keep refreshing to make sure that nothing gets broken as we do this. To do enable this so this enable thing I don't know we could steal this little piece here this physics world enable mad bird we can do that up here in our mad bird code where we're adding the overlap let's see if that helps and that's where we're adding that overlap we could add in a collider so now our mad bird is enabled. Let's let it run and see if, uh, so maybe that's the problem is just needing to individually enable it. So now that our mad bird's enabled, we're gonna see if it uh, accidentally bumps into something. Yep, it still did. So that, that did nothing, essentially. Yeah, I think instead of a collider, and let's use GitHub Copilot for this. So I'm going to take this enable out, even though I feel like it should be enabled. Um, I'm going to going to put these in because we're going to do that overlap, which according to GitHub Copilot, we need to be enabled to do that. So. Let's take this piece of code. This is what I want to change and say. Uh, collider. We'll just ask. To change the code to use a collider instead of an overlap, you can use this physics add collider method instead of an add overlap. Here's the updated code. In this code, the collider method is used to create a collider between the ball and the mad bird. When the two objects collide, the destroy enemy function is called. Awesome. So in here, we're just changing it to collider. We're still calling back that same function. Let's do the same with the mad bird and the blue bird. And I accidentally put that in the wrong method, but that's fine. We'll take this. Instead of add overlap, we're going to add collider. Not colloder, collider. Now let's see if, if using colliders instead of overlap helps. And what we're trying to fix here is when these enemies go down into this tunnel that's the second from the bottom, um, they seem to destroy themselves. And now it doesn't seem to be destroying itself. However, there was a collision there. 
because now the mad bird is in mad bird mode that we entered or that we programmed a while ago let's see if i can grab this cherry without getting smoked nope okay we'll try again and i'm collecting cherries right now in the hopes that i can generate some more enemies Oh, there we go. They both destroyed themselves again. So that didn't fix it. So I'm going to check some other areas where there's overlap. And I'm just going to see if I can remove overlap completely and only use colliders. That's, I think, our, our big fix here. And I'll check something here really quick. quick. Just a quick check, check. Yeah, as we go through here, these enemies so far have not self-destructed, but I have a feeling it, it's not, it's not solid yet. That's why I'm going to go up here and get these because the chance of an en enemy regenerating when I'm up high is is increased. Now we've got a bunch of enemies in here that have not self-destructed yet. That's basically what I'm looking for is to to replicate this self-destruct thing. And yikes. There's a lot of enemies. So I'll wait till these three go through again. That'll be my gap. Oh, I'm toast. So yeah, let's see. Now I did see one self-destruct. So I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Oh, there's another one that self-destructed. So let's look for overlaps and change them to colliders in all of this stuff. How can I change this with physics add overlap? That was a to-do that we just solved with GitHub Copilot. What parameters can I pass to a collider to make it more precise? I don't think there are any, but I'm just kind of seeing Ooh. When passing in, you can pass several parameters. Collide callback. This is a function that's called when the two objects collide. We're doing that. You can use this function to perform any actions you want. We are, we are doing a callback with this already. So that's not new. Process callback. This is a function that is called during the collision resolution process. You can use this function to perform any custom collision resolution. That must be the null. Function that's called during. You can use this function to perform any custom collision resolution logic. Maybe this is where we should put in the health stuff. Overlap only. If set to true, the collider will only detect overlaps between two objects and will not resolve any collisions. Collider type. This is an optional parameter. Specify the type of collider to create. The available types are Arcade, Matter, and Impact. Collide World Bounds. We did turn Collide World Bounds off. Custom Bounds Rectangle. This is an optional parameter that allows you to specify a custom rectangle to use. 
Max collision aperture rate. This is an optional parameter that allows you to specify the maximum number of collision iterations to perform. So let's play around with this a little bit because one of the things that we noticed, um, if you've been on this stream before in the last two or three streams, um, one of the things that I've noticed is that a collision happens like a hundred times a second. And I think we just found with GitHub Copilot a way to do this. So process callback, collide world bounds, max collider. That's what we're looking for right there. So I'm going to take this. I don't think we need the custom resolution logic yet, but I'm not ruling it out. But what I do want to do is limit the iterations because that is one thing that I noticed for sure happens. Like I said, like a thousand times a second, we see this stuff. So I'm going to cut this all this out so just for this destroy enemy we're gonna put in we're not gonna do a custom callback or we don't want it to collide with world bounds but we do want max collision iterations because if this is what I think it is this will prevent it from colliding like a million times. Let's make this look a little nicer. And of course we'll copy it for our other enemy as well. Right here. Max glitter it. Let's just use 10 because that's what it suggested, but I think it should maybe be like one. And I'm hoping this isn't like total, total iterations. Like to where it just iterates 10 times and then there is no collision detection. That would be strange functionality. Nope, we still have these random collisions happening. Let's see how many times we can hit him with the ball. That one actually worked properly. That worked how it should have worked. But yeah, there's some stuff like that that's a little weird. Edge detection, a little weird. So let's get two more enemies in here. Let's see if I have to hit them with the ball twice, which is how we've coded it. Nope. Each one, one time. So, I'm going to change this iteration to one. And that's still the same thing. So we haven't solved that really weird problem. Yep, a collision handler might be the way to do this. That custom collision process thing. Yeah, the ball should not be killing them instantly. They should be hit twice with the ball like that. That one was correct. Why it's correct, I have no idea. But let's let's think about this a little bit. We can do this process callback with the ball and the mad bird. And how's that? Yeah, just put it right in here. Put 
bluebird. Process callback, custom resolution logic. In here, I think, is where we should uh, decrement the health. So all the way down here. When we create a mad bird, we set their health to 100. So we're going to destroy enemy. Get their health, set their health to 50. Instead, I think we should just get the health and say if the health is junk. Um, if the health is zero, then we destroy the enemy. But we're going to go up here and use this to act actually decrement their health in this process callback. So we'll say bluebird, set data, health, health equals minus 50. Let's see if that works. Yep, worked on that one. However, it is not persisting. As you can see, we hit that enemy several times. But we're getting there. So we need to do the get data thing again. Destroy enemy. Let health. Enemy get data health. And up here, all the way back up here. There we go. So we do let health, enemy get data health, and then we subtract that by 50. That's where I think that bug came from is is I was just doing health minus 50, which could be anything. But this way, it's enemy get data health minus 50. This should make that blue bird once again destructible. Oof. The mad bird got me. And the ball doesn't seem to be destroying them at all. It's colliding, but it's not destroying. So one thing I could do, uh, let's display it. Interestingly, it's doing it with both of them, and we haven't really messed with the uh, max collision iterations between the ball. So yeah, that's interesting. That does not work. Okay, we're going to do a... Console log, GitHub Copilot knew exactly what I was thinking. We're gonna say Bluebird Health. And let's see if it's actually decrementing their health value. And I can see we're already at the end of the hour. However, let's finish this thought before that. And I should have chuck this ball at the bluebird when I had the chance. But we'll create another bluebird up here. We've got mad birds like all over the place. Which 
try to get that bluebird. Should be game over. <laughs> and that is interesting. So let's clear this really quick. And it is not displaying the health whatsoever. Don't ask me why. But it is not, uh, hmm, yeah, it's not killing that bluebird. This callback may not even be called right here. Bluebird's active is true. Iterate through bluebird. We're enabling the bluebird. We're calling this destroy enemy. Down and destroy enemy. I'm sorry, I was going to use a lot more uh, GitHub Copilot than I did today, but it's a log. Enemy health is health. Let's see if we can get it to display those health values. Yes, enemy health 100. It just keeps remaining as 100. 55 times it's been hit there. That max iterations also doesn't seem to be doing much. Because as you can see, one ball hit ends up being like 30 different collisions. Yeah, look at it just ramping up over here. So this is a, uh, yeah, this is kind of a weird thing. You know, in here, like enemy hit, enemy hit plus one. We stopped, stopped decrementing the health because we're doing it up here, but it's not working up here. Right here, bluebird set data health. We're not even getting into this process callback. So I'm just going to take it out for now. So yeah, it says I think we could do a collider type. We could mess with that a little bit. I'm going to go back down in here. To destroy enemy. We're grabbing the health, setting it to negative 50. So we're back to doing that again. Let's see if it actually works. Oof, bluebird is not defined. Where is Bluebird not defined? 397? Oh, yeah. Enemy set data, not Bluebird. So this is the enemy that we're passing in here. And this is exactly what I was talking about that I'm trying to solve for. The ball hit them one time, it hit the enemy one time and it said enemy health 100, 50, and then zero. It just goes D -d 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 -d. and I don't know why it's doing that. Doesn't make a ton of sense to me. 
Also, that ball shouldn't sit in the hole like that. It should fall down the hole. I do believe the the ball uh, respects world bounds. That's part of the problem. Oh, this one worked properly. So let's try one more thing. Let's try changing the collider type for these folks. Max collision entry. Yeah, we did both of these. We're enabling both the Madbird. Let's see. Collider type arcade. If this doesn't completely break it, then we we know we put that parameter in, right? And there's another with both of those are not the way we want these to behave. We don't even really know if this is being called, honestly. This process callback. Let's destroy enemy comma. Just making sure that I'm coding this in right, but let's put in some value that we know doesn't exist. Collider type of this and It should tell us that's not a real collider type if it's looking at that. See, I don't even think it's looking at it. So is this fake code? I don't know. Let's see. Physics by collider. Each time that iterates, each of the children, don't see a different way to do this. However, it's not it's not reading or or respecting these these decisions here, according to this code that the GitHub Copilot sent me because I put in collider type of nothing. You know, it's just nonsense words. And the game is running just fine and and not spitting back, hey, that's not a real collider type. So I'm going to ask GitHub Copilot again. We're going to go here to this physics add collider. Okay, so basically what I said is, why doesn't this code work? Max collision iterations is ignored as well as the other collider type. Here's the code. It says max collision iterations and collider type options are not valid options for the collider method in Phaser 3. So that was something that they gave us right here in a collider method. So if anything, I've shown you how to use GitHub Copilot, but I've also showed you where it is incorrect because <laughs> it told me right here to create this collider 
And then here it says max collision iterations and collider type are not valid options for the collider in phaser three. The max collision iterations options is only used for the overlap method and the collider type option is not an option for either the overlap or the collider methods. So it totally lied. If you want to limit the number of collision iterations, you can use the max velocity option instead. Well, now I don't trust you, right? Because it says here, oh, just do max velocity option. Okay. You've given me fake code before, which I'm surprised it didn't kick off a JavaScript error, but it gave me fake code before. So this could be fake code too, but let's try it. Max velocity, max velocity. And this max velocity is set to 100 to limit the maximum velocity of the objects during a collision. I don't even know what that means. As for the collider type option, it is not valid for either the overlap or collider methods. If you need to specify a specific physics engine, you can use the appropriate physics system, arcade matter or impact, and create colliders. Okay. So we were set to arcade earlier. Let's see if this this loads without breaking it does and i have a feeling this is another like just fake option that means nothing to phaser yeah we're still still destroying enemies the same now the bluebird actually worked that time so let's collect some more cherries and get another bluebird started And I just got hit once, so that's not good. Okay, Bluebird that time was not correct. And the Madbird was. So let's think about this a little bit. I know I'm supposed to end this. I know the, the stream's supposed to be over, but we're gonna we're gonna tackle this a little bit here. Okay, Bluebird worked properly. It hit him once. The health was 50, hit it again, then the health was zero. So let's see if it works the same way with the Mad Bird. Yep, Mad Bird is 50. As soon as it touches that ball again, it should die. Nope, now it's 50. So the Mad Bird's actually getting another chance at life. Oh, and the Mad Bird didn't kill me either. Yeah, there we go. Let's try this again. Try to hit the Mad Bird. Should hit it once and then explode. Nope. So Mad Bird, not correct. Blue Bird, not correct. Yeah, this is really weird stuff. Max velocity, I don't think does anything. I'm gonna change the max velocity to a string. Just to see if it's actually a thing, because I don't think it's actually even a thing. Oops. And I do need to hit this for that collider to be called. Yeah, that max, max velocity isn't a thing either. I think anything I put here is just junk. And I will talk about this in an article very soon about hallucination. This is definitely some hallucination. But I think we are gonna wrap up the stream today. We got, got a little close. I didn't get what I wanted out of this, but. We're, we're pretty close. So I think enabling them might be the right thing to do. I think they should be enabled. We can change our physics system and mess with things like that. Like here's default arcade. We could say impact was one of them that they said was an option. Let's start it all over again. I've never even heard of impact. Um, 
What was the other options? Maybe I need to capitalize impact. Yeah, impact doesn't seem to work. Matter. Matter does not seem to work. Arcade. Arcade works. So let's just look that up really quick. Arcade mode, phaser three. It's arcade physics. Say matter mode, and there is physics default matter, a whole bunch of options there. So, I think that'll be a good thing for, for us to do next week's stream is let's try converting this to a matter. I'm going to put that in my to-dos. Actually, I'll just put it down here. Investigate matter mode. So, I think we're going to wrap this up today. We didn't get as much accomplished as we want. We changed the map a little bit, at least. Uh, but we're still fighting this physics problem, and I promise you we are going to fix it on this stream. And I wanted to give a little reminder here. Always, always, always follow us on Twitch. Twitch TV slash Pluralsight Live is where we stream all the time. And if you follow us on there and you send a whisper, I'll send you some cool laptop stickers. Just send me a whisper saying, I would like some laptop stickers and your address, and I'll ship them. We've been able to ship them internationally, so uh, that's not a big deal. But yeah, if you would like some of these cool stickers, then follow us on Twitch and give us a whisper. And we'll send you some cool custom plural size stickers. This is the only place you can get these stickers, so very cool stuff. But I want to thank everybody for coming today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting. Thank you for everything. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure out this player physics thing. We're going to use GitHub Copilot a lot more. Uh, today, it kind of let us down. You know, there's uh, no question there. It kind of let us down a little bit, but we're going to keep working on it and we're going to keep tuning it. And hopefully uh, we can figure out how to leverage it to add some more features to this game even, which would be pretty cool. So let's see who we can raid here. There's somebody cool we can raid, right? Uh, bald bearded builder. I don't remember if he accepts raids or not, but we're going to do it. Thank you all for coming. I will see you all next week. David Neal will be here Thursday, and I will be here next Tuesday, and we will fix this game and make it cool. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you next week.